myself uh, and Dave's going to come back and do a bit of talking as well. So Dave is four times Mr Universe and he's been my training partner I'd say over a decade now. So um, he's been off on injury for a year and a half and he's back training with us so he's going to come and just talk about his experiences with bodybuilding, obviously me as well. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. A lot of people have travelled from all different areas of the UK, uh, even from Lithuania. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get in and go. Sponsored by USA now for. Ten. I started training when I was 14. Uh, before. Uh, Sorry. Who are you? You're late. <laughs> <laughs> I was a very sporty kid. Uh, my sports were gymnastics, swimming, and football. Uh, that's obviously where my core uh, came into play, and that's how I developed my core through gymnastics. <coughs> Uh, when I was 14, I got quite a serious injury to my Achilles, uh, nearly snapped it, and I got placed in pot in order to get them recovered. Still quite a greedy kid, I uh, gained quite a lot of weight, uh, and that's when I developed a slight complex, um, self-confidence issues, and my way of getting back into sports was to, to hit the gym. Uh, working on site, quite, quite long days, uh, getting my nutrition in, doing my cardio before I got on site, uh, training quite late at night after, after work. Uh, I'd be running to the van every few hours just trying to get my protein shake in. I won Mr Great Britain and then I uh, went on to win Mr International. So I basically got sponsored, um, that's when USN looked to me in there and wanted to do stuff with me. Um, and again, I, I felt like I, I wanted to be in physique, so I wanted to keep growing, keep sculpting. Um, but my work was in commercial modeling, so it was a more TV work, advert work. And it got to a point where it was either I stick the size I am and go down the commercial route, or I follow my passion, or try and grow, try and school my physique, and want to go in on stage. Um, and at that time, as I was making that decision, men's physique came about. Um, and that was my way, that was, it felt like it was a calling. I thought, this is a way of introducing myself into the bodybuilding world. It's a way of growing into each class, obviously. I wanted to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so yeah, so I started in men's physique. Unbeknown to me, I thought, right, I'm gonna pick a local show to me so I can go and have a look at it and whatnot. And it was, the, my first ever show was the UK Nationals, which was in uh, Leamington Spa, so it was the closest regional show to me. Uh, started diet dieting, you knew about it, and Dan did, but no one else did, because I just wanted to keep it quiet just in case I backed out or something like that. And I didn't really expect much from that show. Um, but I was very fortunate to, to win that show, so that catapulted my, my career uh, quite drastically really. So it, um, it took me straight to the Arnold Classic, three months later uh, I'm, I'm on the Arnold Classic stage and I was very fortunate because there was 110 in my class. See this is where we have a difference with opinion because Ryan, Ryan thinks that he was genuinely fortunate. Uh, but it was his second show, I basically had to, because I was competing at yeah, the same so heavy weight. And I was sat backstage with him. And yeah, everybody that walked past Ryan's like going, oh, look at this guy, look at that guy. He's literally trying to, he's trying to get out of the back door. Yeah. And I was like, sat there going, yeah. mate, you're going to win this. Not only are you going to win your class, but I think you're going to win the overall as well. And he was yeah. like, no, don't show, chill, chill. Um, but I remember, so it, was a, it was a five hour uh, registration. The queue was huge, 110 people. We're in this queue, and I remember you said, these are lads, they're like big shit out, you know, in the vest and sort of veins popping over. And I was just stood there. I've just won a male beauty pageant. Like, now why is that? <laughs> <laughs> just an idea. I couldn't be doing this. A week later, went on to the British finals. Uh, won the British finals, so the first guy to win the, the Arnold and the men's the British finals. Uh, first pro from the UK. And then it was one of those things where, right, I need to set new goals. We sat down, put, put the vision board up there, which yeah. I've signed every year since. And it was like, right, I need to get to the Olympia. My goal is to be on the Olympia stage. So I just thought, if, if anyone else can do it, I can do it. So, uh, we started working towards it. Went straight into my first show, and I, I got a rude awakening. I was, I was, absolutely, I was dead last. They didn't even mark me. And went for the Pittsburgh Pro. I was fortunate enough to win that, which qualified me for the Olympia, uh, which was surreal, so surreal for that. I went on a week later, won the Atlanta Pro. Uh, went into the Olympia, placed fourth in my first Olympia. So I was really happy with that. As soon as I got back, I think, right, can't wait for next year now. Now what we're going to do? Arnold Classic, so a year later we won the Arnold Classic as a pro, um, then came second in the Olympia. Had a little setback, I moved to America, me and Amy moved to America thinking that was the missing point. 
really I didn't do my, my homework and it, it served me right, I came, I came sit. So that's when I thought, right, move back here, come back to what we know. Yeah, fortunate enough, came back, got third. Um, had a few injuries since then, uh, two hip surgeries this year and a place fifth this year. So for me, a lot of people said, oh, you should have done better and whatnot. I'm happy to tell, I'm not happy because obviously I'm a competitor and I want to be first, but with the year I've had um, and obviously with the wedding, the house build, two surgeries, quite a lot of things prepping for the Olympics, I was happy to walk away with top five in the world. Now I need to really seriously put my sights on 2020, try and get that first place where I've saved the gold mark and for that. It's the, the only place you've got left to get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sixth, yeah. fifth, fourth, third, second. So, yeah, so that's my story anyway so far. And then, do you want to say a bit about yourself? A bit like... Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was fortunate enough to sort of land on the feet and win the first show that I entered, despite the fact I was still couldn't wait for a fight. Um, was fortunate enough to be sponsored by USN. Met with Ryan in 2010. I've had four universe wins, including professional universe, four world titles, top five Arnold in America, top six Arnold in uh, Madrid, and Grand Prix events and national level events. Yeah, you you also 57 yeah. titles to me. Yeah. I am now, this is like a bit like Men in Black, New Harness, Old and Busted. <laughs> <laughs> Rai's greatest strength, I guarantee you people talk about his genetics and things like that, is he's got a mindset that once he's in that zone, I've seen him go on stag dudes with, with like for friends and still eating his food out of a Tupperware box yeah. and not drinking and drinking Was water. It, yeah. Having the actual mental fortitude to back that up and do it is where most people fall down. He doesn't. Now what's going to be interesting to see is this is the first time that Ryan's, if he's honest, he's going to be applying that level to his off season. Yeah. Okay, we need to fill more space on the stage to be competitive to take that top three, and he's applying himself to it. So, yeah, I personally yeah. think he'll win. Oh, I think you've got it. It is, but I think he's optimistic. I remember the first vision board that you yeah. I'm not, I didn't take the piss out of him at all. So <laughs> <laughs> but the first vision board, and it said, Men's first yeah. men's physique professional, yeah, for first win national team. title, win Arnold Schwarzenegger classic overall, Avenue win, into America, Avenue into America yeah. become popular and, and, and successful, financially, yeah, and financially, financially successful in America. Yeah. But what I did and is I put achieved it, all those. That's the mindset that yeah. he has. I put it in my um, wardrobe, so with my multi bits and stuff in the morning, my BCAs. I'd open it up and it just reiterated in my head like the goals I'm trying to achieve. Some people think that's cheesy and it, it may be, but it worked for me. It was like, just kept me back on track, just set me up for the day. So demoralizing. To be fair, I think, I mean, what Ryan was saying there, which he is that sort of guy who sort of breathes through what you've actually gone through. To have two serious hip surgeries, pre pretty much have five and a half serious months of training and come fifth and probably the best physique lineup that there has been on stage that year. Well, the standards are getting insane. I don't now, think there's it? many other guys that could have done that. You know what I mean? Some guys, some guys will train the whole life and never grace an Olympia stage. To yeah. actually go in there after being injured, smashed to pieces, literally. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go through all the rehabilitation. Well, I have to do with that guy as well. He helped me get through it. So it's my physio. If any of you know him, of my videos, Johnny Hands, we twice a week or once a week in the last three or four weeks. He's He's um, basically helped my rehab and helped with my physio keep him on track. But, right, we're going to go straight into some Q&A's then. So, uh, yeah, so fire away, please guys. Are there any questions? You yeah. know how obviously you had a real bad year last year? Yeah. Um, are we feeling about going into like next year for the Olympia? I'm a lot more positive now because I got feedback from the Olympia this year, which I've never really done because all I ever hear of people is, oh, you need more size, you need more size. So I kind of... I understand that, but for me, I'm not. I'm genetically gifted to hold lots of muscle. So if I miss a meal, I lose weight. It's, it's quite difficult for me. I have to have a lot of food. So doing that 365 days a year is difficult. And if you look back at the last two Olympias, I'm always placing first and second from the front. But yeah. then as soon as I turn to the back, I'm dropping places. And I've got no excuses now. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to compete in the year, but for me, I'm back to full training now. I'm, I can't hide behind any more excuses. So for me. I'm a bit more positive going into next year. I know what I need to do. Really um, change, so on season, off season, maintaining anything like that, I have two grams to every kilogram I weigh. So on average, it's between 180 to 200 grams of protein. So that's split over six meals uh, and a protein shake. The thing is as well, there's a misconception of more protein, bigger muscles. And, and people are becoming more educated now, so they know that's not 
not right. But why waste the calories in, in protein when you can add more energy, fuel, fuel efficient food, i.e. carbs and fats to your diet? So, so if you are looking to put your plan together, Focus on the carbs and, and the fats. That's why, where you differentiate. The protein really is relative. The balance of your nutrition is far more important than just the volume of protein mm. that you, you're putting in. See this 10,000 calorie challenge yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, that, that, was real. Real. that was pitiful. I can <laughs> kill that in a meal. You could have done that. You could have smashed that. What was that? It's a bag of crisps. So like 800 shorts, 700 short yeah. calories. But I physically could not put in it. And I literally, for two days, one hour, I'd never got off the sofa. I felt like shit. What was even more demoralizing was Craig, my videographer, who decided to show me a, a video of Rob Lipset, who did it in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> 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 To just touch on when you're talking about bringing your back up, I know what yeah. you're doing, but oh, to yeah. tell everybody else, how are you going to go about bringing your back up? Right. We've always said, like, if we've got weak muscle groups, we'll try and introduce a second um, session in the week. Obviously, we have to be mindful that it's got to be fully repaired. There's no, pe no point hitting the same muscle group if it's not fully repaired. So, we've split up <coughs> my back up now onto a width workout on a Monday, and then we're hitting um, thickness, pr predominantly thickness, on a Friday. Um, and what we're doing with that is trying to increase my calories as well within those two two days. So if I'm carb cycling, we'll be increasing our carbs. They'll be the two high days. Um, that's that's something that I think you should all take on. That is very very beneficial. If you've got a lagging body part, yeah. bringing in a second workout, space well out. Those are the days that your calorie consumption should be up. Yeah. Everybody used to believe that six to eight reps for hypertrophy was the only way. Yeah, we not, can train not. now where we're doing 20 and 30 reps on leg press and that hypertrophy is still happening. We're still struggling yeah. to walk. But even, like, even the top guys like Dex Jackson now, he even says he can get a full workout of two kg dumbbells because at the end of the day, it's just that mind to muscle connection. It's getting that blood pumping and he can do time and attention. There's so many different methods of training now. So We've got into an habit of like, oh, we don't like that exercise. Yeah, let's let's do something else. Oh, I don't like that attachment. Let's use a different one. Yeah. So we're now making sure that the exercises that we don't enjoy doing, we they're the ones that generally take priority because yeah. they're the ones that are going to bring you on. An adaptive response. Yeah. So if you're putting your body through consistently the same workout, you know, consistently getting the same sort of rep margins, consistently getting the same sort of exercises in, yeah. why does it need to adapt? Yeah. You're not giving it anything new to adapt to. I do think there's there's room for, for changing, swapping things up, keeping the body guessing, keep your excitement in training. So what I would suggest though is find a rough guideline then of, of what you want to achieve. But again, as well, you need to be your best on that day anyway. So yeah. you, you just need to go in and get the most conditioned, the, the best presentation you're going you're gonna to give. So you do your research. I prep for 16 weeks now. First four weeks is, is gaining. It's just trying to get that structure back in my diet, but trying to put the calories in to, to get into a good starting position when I'm at 12 weeks to, to then start to be in a deficit. About eight weeks out, you start putting your routine together. Start trying to look at what's your best asset. So if you've got a tight waist, you stand straight on. If you haven't, you stand slightly off center. That's for men's physique. People don't realize, but stood there holding poses, you burn so many calories. So when you're dieting, it's just an extra form of cardio, but it's, um, it's, it's so important. If you look at bodybuilders on stage and they're shaking and stuff, that's because they haven't done the poses. Yeah. They have, they're not used to it, they can't hold, they can't contract the muscles and obviously they're shaking. So you get massively marked down for that. So every morning I was doing ice attention. So I just stand in the mirror, attempting, so I'd inhale, exhale, hold for three seconds, as hard as I could in the mirror, then redo it, do 20, then 20 to the side, and then 20 to that side. Um, yeah, I know obviously can do things to like help bring your waist in, but is there anything like in particular that you can do to like just bring it in or is it genetic? So, so genetically, you, you, you are what you've got with your hips and stuff. There's ways you can obviously make it look smaller by obviously increasing your shoulders, your width and your, your back, uh, which is going to give you the illusion of a tight waist. If, if you, the, the, and then you go into how you pose, like I just said there briefly, they'll always go slightly off centre because it, it elongates their obliques, so it makes them look tighter in the waist and it shows their obliques off and stuff. When you start prepping for a show, yeah. you start going, you start doing your, your posing 15 minutes after every session, but you look at what's your best assets, so you, you try and accentuate them, but then your weaker points, you 
try and hide them. Competition, like how do you turn, like on a night time, I find sometimes I'll be laid in bed and it's just tick, 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 and then I don't get no sleep. Have you competed? I haven't, no, I want to eventually, but it's just. So for me, this is something I've, I've learned the hard way, but I was too anal 365 days of the year. Yeah. One, it hindered my, my progress because I was always in a deficit, so I was trying to stay so lean, my, my body metabolism was so fast. It, I wasn't gaining, I wasn't making yeah. improvements because I, I wanted to stay lean all year. Um, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, stay focused. <laughs> so staying motivated for me now is 365 days of the year, I was, I was basically too obsessed with it and I burnt out. Yeah. So now I'm fortunate enough that 16 weeks of the year, I'm focused and whatnot. And again, like he says, he pushes the ball in the way. I always think, is Jeremy w wincing out on this uh, session or is he missing meals or is he doing, and that fires me up. And again, I'm very competitive. So to be the best in the world, I'm not happy until I'm the best in the world. So coming second, third, yes, it's okay, but it's not what I'm there for. Off season, I try to relax. I try not to look at my calories too much. I know I need to be, I know what my maintenance is. So I need to be in a surplus. I know I'm, I'm in a surplus because I'm carrying body fat and my strength's going up, things like that. So I'm not too anal about it so I can switch off. Yes, we're going to hit plateaus. Yes, there's going to be times where you can't be asked to train and stuff, but having a training partner makes you accountable. So if, you, if you're on your own, you think, oh, fuck it, I'll, I'll have a rest day today. Whereas if you've got two lads waiting for you at the gym, you know you can't. And the moment you're into that session and they're shouting at you, or if you do, you get into it. It's just that initial yeah. starting point. But he's really, really good. Brian's really, really good at the levels. He's, he, like you say, if he's having one of those days and we see that, he's, he's living proof that you don't beat somebody on stage. Okay, yeah, You get the result on stage, but you don't beat them on stage. You beat them in the months prior to that. The hard work that you've done in the off season, and you know he's he's living proof of that. What he's very very good at is he'll like, well, do it. Oh, nah, we've done enough sets now, or something like that. But if Neil scheduled the workout, we'll say, oh, well, Jeremy would probably do them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just like, it's, it's, it's just like dropping the switch. Yeah, you know, yeah. we really do them, but then we'd be wanting to do force reps yeah, and cool. sets at more. the end of it. Do more. And it's just like, but 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 we are all human though as well. So yeah. I, I I do have those days. So I'm not here like saying I'm. I can do it every day and all whatnot. Yeah. There are days like that, but for me at the minute, I, I'm not having days like that because I still revert back to the start of the year when Emil vouched for me. I was, I was miserable because I was on crutches for six months yeah. and I, I couldn't train and I was looking on social media, looking at Jeremy, looking at Brandon. Everyone's getting bigger and improving and competing. I'm getting smaller and smaller and it was soul destroyed. So I couldn't wait to get back on stage and that's another reason I'm competing more so as well because being away from stage and having that choice taken away from me, it's made me realise how much I love competing, how, much, how beneficial it is to me in my everyday life, and that's why I want to get back on stage more. So it's given me that extra boost, that fire up. When you have chicken, is it clean chicken you eat, or is it like, do you have, do you have like bits of like organic, or is it just mainly like just normal food? It's not going to make a difference. Like I say, if you buy in bulk from the bunches or whatever, that's probably your best source. I get it from. Muscle Foods, my sponsors. <laughs> no plug there. But, um, but I get all my meat. So I have fillet steak, two fillet steaks a day when I'm dieting. I have two salmon fillets a day when I'm dieting. There's one portion. Um, two chicken breasts, four eggs, and oats. So that's my six meals. Um, but again, they're all fresh. It's not frozen stuff or anything like that. But we are going to run some competitions now, which I'm really hoping you'll all get involved. It'd be class if you do. Um, we're going to do some tyre flipping.
pros worth coming up for the day. I got into the gym in 2012 and then um, started following Roy in 2013 and then just ever since. So it's in all his wins. I went to Vegas to watch him in the Olympia. He's the same height, um, he's the same kind of weight, but then he's ripped. Um, so he's it's an achievable, um, he's an achievable look, and he's an achievable shape. Um, but obviously, he's got amazing abs, and he's in brilliant shape. So I aspire to be like him one day, maybe. Um, but we'll just see how things go. I'd like to thank USN and thank the gym for putting this on today. Um, it's a good event for everyone, and then wish, wish more gyms would do the same kind of thing because it brings everyone together and it's a good community spirit. Ryan Terry is a huge, I'm a huge fan. Um, he's very inspiring. Um, you know, whenever I go to the gym and stuff, he's always in my brain to think, right, on the last set, I'm going to feast it. Um, huge, huge respect for the guy. Yes, loved it. Absolutely loved this event. Uh, really, really good. Loved it. Um, I'm from Newcastle, so uh, the phone off our junior and the coach was just disgusting. But yeah, it's been class. It's been a really, really good day. Uh, my name's Joe, I'm from Newcastle. Ryan's a great. Um Representation um, for the UK um, of, of like hard work, dedication, and how it pays off. And um, I'm very confident next year he'll, he'll smash it in the Olympia and get that finally get that first place. Um, but yeah, it'll be a great event, and uh, really enjoyed myself. Um, I've been following Ryan now for about three or four years. Uh, he's probably one of the my biggest reasons why I've got into bodybuilding. I also say a big thanks to Ryan, Good Bodies, USN for putting on this, this event today so I could have the opportunity to meet one of my heroes. It's been an absolute pleasure. The train here is such a such a cool gym. I love that the old school aesthetic. You walk in, it's cold, but as soon as you start getting that pump pom start getting warm, it, you just, it's just great. I can't put in the words. <laughs>guys that's a wrap at uh, the Ryan Terry meetup uh, thank you to everybody who came down absolutely brilliant um, atmosphere uh, we got a lot of tire flippers with the competitions got everyone going um, as you can see the cake I feel very sick now because we smashed quite a lot of that but uh, thank you again to everyone coming down and please subscribe to the channel 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 and comment below on what you want to see in the next videos thanks guys